The Bears try to make their move but get rejected back into the friend zone. Is the market stuck in neutral? This is Invest with Jacob. Okay, guys, so in yesterday's video, we talked about the fact that the Bears had a setup to take the market lower, and they fell flat on their face and got rejected and put us back into the range. Now, the question is, how long will we be in this range? I'll get into that in just one second, but first, if you're new here, welcome to the show, guys. My name is Jacob Gabbard, and this is Invest with Jacob, where we use Elliott Wave Theory to break down the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below so that you could get our daily S&P updates, our trade setups, and our buy alerts. All right, guys, the Bears were unable to push it lower, so let's jump into the chart and take a look. Okay, guys, so here we are on the one-hour futures chart for the S&P 500. And just real quick here, we're on the futures chart. You can see that uh, the futures are trading right now, and they're in line with where we're at. And the reason for that is we use this back-adjusted button down here to adjust for contract rolls. We did get our contract rollover last night into the March contract and out of the December contract. So if I click this button again, you'll see that... It looks like a really big gap up here in the futures, but that's not really the case. All we did was move to the next contract, and this is part of futures trading and something you need to understand. This is not a true 50-point gap up. It is simply a move to the next contract, which is why we have this back-adjusted button. And when we click that, it lines everything up for us. So you can see it moves the market to where it's supposed to be. Now, all of our prices are higher at 46.38 because that's where the market is trading, but it's only trading there because of the contract roll. So just a quick uh, FYI, in case you were unfamiliar with that particular thing that happens in the market. So with the contract roll, we are up at higher prices, uh, about 50 points or so higher, right in that range. And so we had a one-two setup, okay? So we had a pretty good w five waves down, an ABC up here, and then we had another pretty good five waves down. And actually, this can count overall as big five waves. I thought it counted better as a one-two here and then down. So we did have a breakout setup or breakdown setup, I should say, for the Bears. As long as they could have pushed through support and the pivot, they were unable to do that. They did not even reach the 1.0, and the Bulls took them up out of that area. So where are we at now? Well, we're back in the range that we've been in for a while since Thanksgiving, really. We've had a couple spikes over the range, a spike or two under the range, but for the most part, trading uh, basically in this range right here for the better part of uh, two or three weeks here. So that's where we're at at the moment. And for the count, <clears throat> okay, we would be looking at this as, for the bulls, this being a spike wave three high, an A, B, C down for wave four. And then we'd look for an A, B, C up to complete this wave five. And it's going to be on this chart up around 45, 70 to 80, which translates into that 40, or I'm sorry, 46, 70 or 80, which translates to that 40, uh, 6, 20 to 30 we were talking about. Remember, you got about a 50 point roll here, so that's why we're up higher. But it would be in that area toward this top of this trend line where we would finish out if they're going to take this path. So we'd look for this pullback here in a corrective manner that should hold the 0.5 to 0.618 and then take it higher up toward this 4670 to 80 area to complete this diagonal, and then we would look for a turn down from there. So that would be the bullish path that we'd be looking for. Now, on the bearish side, we still haven't taken out Wednesday's high, and until we do, you do still have a 1-2-1-2 setup. It's not my favorite setup, I will be very honest with you. This is a nice five down, I do like that. Then you got a wave two, but this one of three is pretty deep. It goes past the 764, and then this wave, 2 of 3, is really high, almost back to the peak of Wednesday, and much higher than you would expect to see in a wave 2. So a possible bear setup, but I wouldn't call it a probable bear setup. Now, if we do start to see an impulsive move down and they break through support, ultimately we have to break the low from uh, yesterday. If we can break that low, come down, break through, Okay, then 45.90 uh, becomes the area to watch as the next support level. And then ultimately, our support moves up to 45.50 at the bottom. Okay, so it's 45.50 and 45.90, um, the two levels to watch to break. If they can get through that and break through this trend line here and hold this trend line here, then the Bears still can take this down again. This is not my favorite setup. It is not something I am highly 
calling highly likely, but that be what we're that would be what we're looking at if the Bears were able to take this down. So overall, right now, I do think we're in a bullish setup with this being an A, B, C toward 4670 to 80. With the B wave coming down into that 4620 to 30 area, into this support for B and then C up to give us that high which would be an ending diagonal here. And then we'd look for a turnover and selling from there. So we do still have indications that this market is exhausting, that it should be rolling over, that it should be topping, support should be breaking. We should be looking for a pullback. But again, we have not broken support. And until we break support, pressure remains up. I explained this uh, about a week ago where when I talk about the idea of a pullback, it just means that the indicators and the Wave counts and everything are saying that we should be in an area we're looking for a pullback. But until we break support, okay, the market is still in a pressure up situation, meaning the market can press higher and make new highs. It doesn't have to pull back. It's not a rule that it has to pull back. It's no part of Elliott Wave Theory that says if it doesn't pull back here, it's a failure. It's just saying that between the wave counts and the indicators, conditions are correct for a pullback. We would be looking for one, but they need to break support before we will get on board with a full-on pullback happening. Over on the NASDAQ. Okay, on the NASDAQ, we are on the five-minute chart. And again, you have your contract roll. So it looks normal on my chart because I have this back adjusted button hit down here. If you take that off, you'll see that the market slides down. It's about a 200-point contract roll. This is not, I repeat, not a gap up. It is simply contract roll. So all the prices move up to make it a seamless contract roll. And so what you have still on the NASDAQ is an ABC to the downside, okay? And then you have this B wave up. And as long as they stay under the 16300 level, pressure remains down on the NASDAQ. They did break support below the 15800 level. We'll call it 16,000 now because of the contract roll. But the 15800 level was broken before the contract roll. And then they have started to push up in what we would call B wave. So as long as they're below this 16300 level, we would look for the start of a C wave down. And again, we're looking for this to take us down into the 156 area. We were looking for the 15400 area, but given the contract roll, that moves up to the 15600 area. So we would be looking for that move down if they're going to play out the more bearish count. If they're going to play out the move to the upside, we would be looking for one more high, and that one more high should take us up to about the 16,500 level. 16,433 to 16,500 is where we'd be looking for that, and we would be looking for a move up, a pullback, and then one more push back up here into the 16,433 to 16,500 level. And so overall, that would be the bullish count on the NASDAQ. So a little bit of a pullback and then a continued push higher. But 16,433 to 16,500 would be the target for that move up. And then we would look for uh, the market to potentially turn over from there. Guys, if you love the information that I put out in these videos and you want real-time market updates from me, you need to check out investwithjacob.com. There's a link down in the description. Go ahead and click that link. It'll take you right over to the web page. Once you're there, check out our membership plans area. We have two incredible monthly plans that both come with a seven-day free trial because I want you to get in there. I want you to make sure you love it and become part of the trading team before you ever spend a penny. You have nothing to lose and you can cancel at any time time. We also have our Elliott Wave for Beginners online course. This course is helping real traders make real money and understand a market in a way that makes sense. The market is irrational, it is emotional, and it doesn't make a lot of sense much of the time. When good news makes the market go down and bad news makes the market go up, it's very hard to understand why this happens. It's because news doesn't move the market, but sentiment does. And sentiment is measured by the moves and the FIB levels. We give you the key numbers so you know where the market should hold, and if it doesn't hold, what happens? And if it does hold, what happens? So that you're always prepared for the next move in the market. The really cool thing, guys, it's 25 videos in three sections where we go over an introduction so you can understand why Elliott Wave works, what your mindset needs to be, everything to get started, your chart setup and tools where I go through each one of the tools you will need to use with Elliott Wave and how to use them. I go through your Elliott Wave for Beginners area where we go through each of the waves, how they work, what they look like when they're on target, what they look like when they fail, how to get the numbers, how to measure them, the theory of alternation, the corrective zigzag, corrective depth theory, the pivot, everything you need to know to fully understand a market that doesn't make sense. Now, if you don't want to pay the $67, I completely understand. You can get this course for free if you become a monthly member. In our first room, 
the Invest with Jacob room, you get all of my real-time market updates, all of my buy and sell alerts, all of your Elliott Wave questions answered, a midday video where I go over exactly where we are in the counts and what to expect, as well as the Elliott Wave for Beginners online course. We trade the SPY and the QQQ, and we swing in day trades, so we trade quite often in my room. Now, if you're looking for futures trading, income trading, advanced training, and individual stocks, you need to check out PT's Throne Room. In there, you get everything you get in the Invest with Jacob room, as well as that futures trading, the income trading, the individual stocks, and PT's reduced risk binary method that just crushes the market. He gets you in at a cheap price and gets you huge multiples on your money. And it's how he structures his trades. It's so unique. Something you really have to see to understand. And that's another reason we give you that seven-day free trial. He also started a challenge account where he put $4,000 into an account trading mini ES futures, showing you how to build a small account into a large retirement or savings account. Guys, we'd love to have you in these rooms so we can all make money together. All right, key takeaways for today. Don't forget about the contract roll. Have your back adjusted button hit to make it easier. We are looking for a potential ABC pattern up toward the 4670 to 80 area to complete this wave five of this diagonal. One more push higher uh, in that market and then a turnover from there. If the Bears can hold the high from yesterday and really hold the high from Wednesday, as long as they're under that high, they can take this lower. But given the length of this one of three and two of three, I just don't see that as a higher probability path at this time. Over on the NASDAQ, we could be completing this B wave here and starting a C wave down toward the 15600 area. They would need to break uh, Wednesday's low to get that in motion and break through that support area. You have support here and here. Break through that, and we're targeting 15600 or so to the downside. To the upside, we're looking at an ABC higher toward the 16433 to 16500 area to complete that move off of this low. Guys, it's the weekend. Grab yourself a drink. Get out of the house. Spend some time with your family. And I will talk to you next week.